Jenny Bateman and as a young girl growing up around extremely gifted and talented men and women in Champaign, Illinois, had a great opportunity to learn at the feet of so many who are award-winning architects, designers, philanthropists, and entrepreneurs. I was also blessed to have my 4-H leader really understand how to deal with my inquisitive nature and she actually took me all the way through with the um, home goods as they called it at that point in time took me all the way to nationals with a um, two-piece suit and once you get to nationals you're sitting on a stage completely by yourself at a table and the judges take your garments and cut them completely apart then by cutting them apart they gave, gave them back to you and you had to reconstruct the entire garment. So you had a sewing machine, pins and needles, and thread. They wanted to know you had done the work yourself. And I've carried that through all these years um, to where I am today. So as an educational opportunity, um, I got to take classes through the University of Illinois since I was about 10 or 11 years old. And I would ride my little pink Schwinn bicycle all the way to the U of I, um, park it, lock it, and um, one of the most, well, two very inspirational uh, professors. And for the life of me, I cannot remember their names, but I remember their faces, I remember their hands, the way they touched materials. Um, one was a textile designer, and she taught everything from uh, batik, silk painting, using dyes. She taught indigo work, and then took all of that into weaving textile design. So. Surface design is something that's um, almost second nature to me. The other professor was a very um, Midwest man. His name is Preston Jackson. And Preston was the TA. He was uh, working on his master's in sculpture. And he made the comment that I've never forgotten, and that was, um, you probably don't have much to say as an artist until you're about midway through your career. And then you better start working on your story. Uh, Preston, I uh, worked with Preston uh, developing the Contemporary Art Center in Peoria, Illinois. Um, that was in like 94, 95. Had a solo show there in 96. And it was all about textiles and how that has influenced my touch as a painter, sketch artist, and textile. Going back to sort of my, my parents' influence, I was a young girl and I called my bedroom my studio and I had my dad helped me set up sawhorses and doors all along the perimeter of my room. So I had my sewing machine on one desk, I had uh, watercolors on another, I had a little T-square and a triangle so that I could emulate what my dad was doing in his drafting, architectural drafting skills. And um, then I 
put beads around my bed, and that's where I sat and wrote. So I was encouraged all along, both at the University of Illinois, Eastern Illinois University, uh, the Art Institute in Chicago, and then by an amazing number of men and women who then um, saw something and encouraged it, nurtured it, coached it, and so now, as Preston would say, <laughs> now I have a story to tell. The story I'm telling at McLean County Art Center this year is been a lifelong sort of thought in the back of my head when I would see smokestacks dotted along the shores and waterways of our country. My husband and I have lived from Puget Sound all the way to Pennsylvania, to Florida, to Chicago, and kind of everything in between. And it's amazing to see the number of old and still working smokestacks. My dad, as an architect and builder, um, he was a very innovative man and he helped develop um, something that the uh, laminated beams so that the churches could be built without buttresses and individual rooms, but rather curved, um, bent beams and you have these enormous areas, open areas for, for worship and they built churches all across the country. That meant they had to learn how to fly. And so all of these architects, all my dad's partners, flew planes. And so during the summer when I was out of school, I would go with my dad. We went to New York City once, and that's really where these whole smokestacks started coming into, into view. That's where the Industrial Age started, all along those um, eastern shores. And the billowing smoke and the colors, it just gives me goosebumps thinking about remembering it. The colors that just were belching, for lack of a better word, out of these smokestacks was, um, it, it obviously stuck somewhere in my mind, my body, my heart. And now, with my gut, it's taken me several years to complete the work that, um, that I'm blessed to have at McLean County Art Center. Uh, I've been a member of the community on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off for about 25 years. So, to be recognized in your own hometown that you have something, something to say a story to tell. Um, that's something that's rare, but it's something I really treasure and I, um, I'm very grateful to the curator who uh, saw something in me and now with uh, the current leadership at McLean County Art Center to be able to come in, develop a, a catalog that had a um, has a robust perspective, but a, a, also a robust um, synergy between the textiles, the painting, and the writing. The, the textiles, I basically drop my feed dog on my sewing machine. Those are those little teeth that bite the fabric and pull it through the needle. You drop that and you can free motion. I call it painting with thread. And so many of the pieces in my current exhibition uh, are examples of that. I'm also working on clayboard and aquaboard. And the clayboard is this amazing, soft, supple um, clay that has been buffed to this super, super soft touch. And by using that, 
I also use a lot of water and a lot of paint and I dip a credit card into the paint and I move the paint with the card. So when I do that, then I lift this clay board and move it around and sometimes it can take an hour just to get a little tiny part of that where I want it, where the paint can, you can almost see it layering itself. So the colors are incredible. I also am so excited um, about a particular paint that has minerals that have been pulverized and added to the watercolor paint. It is not glitter. It isn't anything man-made. It's all minerals that have been mined and pulverized. And you get this incredible um, illuminated color. <laughs> so with, with that, what I'm really trying to do with this particular body of work is to capture that essence of the atmospheric conditions um, to be able to say, you know, how the sun catches those uh, minerals that are floating out of and out of the smokestacks, and how they can, even though it's it's a devastating um, piece to our environment, how you can find exciting color, atmosphere, conditions that just somehow speak to something deep inside my, my head. Um, so that's kind of where I am as an artist. I have a lot of um, opportunities <laughs> that, are, that are manifesting as a result of this um, body of work. Uh, be, I have a solo exhibition at the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art in 2023, and they want smokestacks, but they want smokestacks that are typical to um, Pennsylvania, the East Coast. So those will probably take on a whole different atmosphere than those that I've traveled along the Illinois waterways. I've also, um, as a signature member of the International Society for Experimental Artists, um, doing a talk about innovation. What does, what, what does it really mean to innovate, to experiment as an artist? When do you know you've succeeded? When do you know you've failed? Oh, I've failed a lot. <laughs> But with those failures comes the success of just finding what it is I'm looking for. So that uh, I'll be talking to a international symposium in, on Mackinac Island the third week of September of this year. And going through that, we've also added a keynote um, opening of the Yes Trio, the head of the string department at the University of Colorado in Boulder, will be playing his upright bass, while Yali, who is an international ballet dancer, he will be dancing, interpreting the music, while the music interprets my credit card strokes. <laughs> so um, you never know when one thing will lead to the next, which leads to something else. Uh, failure comes, but as I, as I speak to different groups, um, there's two words that I always want to leave with the group of people, whether I'm coaching, which I I have um, a nice, robust uh, coaching process 
teaching. So I teach through various art centers, uh, art colleges, and as I, as I leave the group, the two words that I always want to leave you with is show up. Thank you very much, McLean County Arts Center.